I'd like to try to learn a third language, even though I'm a bit on in years. I'd still like to try to do that. I came of age in the early 1970s during a period when there was a kind of social upheaval, late 60s, early 70s. And even though I was a bit young at that point, I had an older brother and sister and older friends. And they were fully the idea that there were a lot of things that were wrong about the world and that radical change was needed. And I'm of a practical bent. So for me, the question immediately rose, well, if not this, what? How would we organize relations among people? How would we exchange goods and services if we didn't have this system? And then somebody introduced me to the idea of cooperatives. And I said to myself, well, that's the answer to the question. I cook as often as I can. My favorite cooperative principle, I would have to say democratic member control. And I say this because I think it is the irreducible cooperative principle. It's the principle that's been there from the beginning. It's the principle that never comes out when the principles are reviewed and sometimes revised. And I think it is what distinguishes a cooperative from every other form of organization. I love listening to audiobooks while I do housework, and sometimes I'll look for housework. I love to iron, for example. I actually don't enjoy ironing, and most people I know don't do it, but I do it because I can listen to audiobooks while I iron. Well, this summer I had the opportunity to go actually for a second time and spend time in Mondragon with people involved in the Mondragon group of cooperatives. And there is nothing like it in the world. I think there are many examples across the globe of successful cooperatives, but what you have in Mondragon is a, is a whole interlocking system of cooperatives. It's not perfect, but it's nearly perfect. It's, it's, it's really ingenious what they have developed over the decades.